it's time to brew some Czech Amber Lager. And yeah, we're going to talk about water. So Czech Amber Lager has a very bready, multi characteristic as really you'd expect from any kind of Amber Lager. But it also has quite a significant hoppy character to it as well. And it's that combination of malt and hops that I've really enjoyed with all of the Czech Lagers so far. Now when I think bready, I really like the characteristic of Maris Otter. So I'm going to add into the base malt three pounds of Maris Otter and I'm gonna combine that with four pounds of floor malted Bohemian Pilsner. And then to top that off, I'm putting two pounds in of light Munich malt. And then for specialty malts, I have 12 ounces of Caramel 80 and eight ounces of Aromatic malt. And I'm mashing in at 152 Fahrenheit for about 60 minutes or until I reach my pre-boil gravity of 1044. Forget what you said, you forget what I did Or just turn up the heat and we'll keep it all night long So let's talk a little bit about water, or water, if you're an American. I'm trying to learn how to say that word. Uh, okay, look, when you're brewing with water, there are two things really that can impact the beer. Um, one is the pH of the water, and that will affect how well your mash performs. And then there's the mineral content of the water and that will affect much more uh, related to the taste and fermentation of the beer. Now I typically have not done a whole lot of adjustments with water, um, but I have at least typically adjusted for pH. Now the optimum range for pH during the mash is typically said to be between about 5.2 to 5.6. And if you are outside of that range, you're likely to see a drop in your brew house efficiency. And I've seen that personally myself. If I am well outside of that range, I typically end up with a pre-boil gravity that is not as efficient, it's lower than I expected it to be. Now the way that I have adjusted for that is to use a simple calculator. Um, let, let me show you. So in the past, I've been using a simple spreadsheet to adjust for mass pH, uh, just simply called Easy Water Calculator. Uh, what you do is you plug in your starting water profile. So I looked this up from, from my city to see what my water profile was. Um, from there, I enter the volume of water I'm using, uh, both mash and sparge. I don't sparge, I only mash. I'm using full volume mashes. So I enter that value in there. And then I enter in the grains that I'm using and uh, the, the weight and sometimes the color if it requests that part of it. And what that will do is it will calculate what my mash pH is gonna be. So you can see here my mash pH is 5.75 and that's outside of the ideal range. So I need to bring my mash pH down and I can use basically these levers here, gypsum, calcium chloride and epsom salt to bring those down. So I will just kind of experiment with this. Um, you can see just with those adjustments there, I'm now in an optimal range of uh, 5.58. Uh, that's still pretty close. So I'm gonna add a little bit of lactic acid too. And now I am pretty much right there in uh, the optimal range for mash. That's pretty much all I would do. Then I would add the necessary amount of those water salts and be done. Now the spreadsheet does show you a little bit more information about your water profile down here. So you can see how much calcium, magnesium and so forth are, are in the beer as well. I've typically not worried too much about that, uh, but focus more on getting the mash pH right. Now the second part of the whole water chemistry thing is how the water profile that you're using is going to affect the taste of the beer. And the one concession that I've ever made to that relates to the chloride sulfate ratio. So a good rule of thumb for this is that a low number below 1.0 is going to enhance bitterness. So something you'd use for a pale ale or an IPA and anything above that number is going to enhance more of the multi characteristics. So I might adjust my profile based upon that. 
There are, however, some kind of unknowns in this spreadsheet. Now, first of all, this starting water profile, I looked it up from the City Water website a couple of years ago. I haven't changed it since. I don't know how accurate that is. Water supplies change all the time. Um, the amount of this, these numbers, I have no idea how accurate they are. So that is kind of the downside to using the local water. I just have no confidence, really, in these numbers being accurate on any given brew day. <laughs> So I have here something called a total dissolved solids meter or a, a TDS meter. And this measures the amount of dissolved stuff in water. So I can really see how pure it is. Now I'm gonna test this against five water samples that I've got here. So going from left to right, I have just a glass of tap water. I have a glass of tap water that's been through my RV water filter. And then the third one here, this is where I went out to glacier water, which is one of these things you see outside of grocery stores, and just filled up a gallon of water from that. Now this is sort of purified uh, reverse osmosis water, but it's intended for drinking. The fourth sample I have is purified water, which I just got from the grocery store. And then finally, distilled water. Now what I'm expecting to see is that distilled water should have no dissolved particles in it whatsoever. So the total dissolved solids should just be zero or, or very close to it. Uh, but it's gonna be kind of interesting to see how the others compare. So I'm gonna use my, uh, my trusted GoPro here to show you the reading of this thing. My tap water has a parts per million TDS score of 188, 193, something like that. Now, Actually, that's not terrible. On, on the back here, it has a scale for what you should expect. And typical tap water ranges between 200 and 300 parts per million. So a score in the high 100s, oh, that's not so bad. Now, let's compare that to this same tap water that's been run through my RV water filter. You can see there that the number is lower. It's 113, 114 parts per million. So it's improved. Um, but I don't know what those actual dissolved solids are. Uh, I just know there's a little bit less of them. Okay, now third example, glacier water. There we go, 33. So that is way better. It's gone green on this, uh, this setting here. So 33 seems like a, a much better score. But the trouble is, in terms of water chemistry, I still don't know what that 33 represents. I know that it's pretty clean water at this point. Um, but still, I don't really know. Okay, now the fourth sample is uh, this Nestle Pure Life, which is purified water. It does say it's enhanced with minerals for taste, so there's gonna be something in here. Let's see what we get. So those enhanced minerals for taste are giving us a score of 59, so there is stuff in there, and again, I don't really know what it is. Okay, now the final example is the distilled water. And look at that, zero parts per million. There's absolutely no dissolved solids detectable in that water. So distilled water does give you a completely blank slate and you can then add water chemicals, water salts as you need to get whatever profile you're looking for, but you know that you're starting from zero. That's the real advantage of distilled water. Okay, so I've been uh, cooling the wort. The, the ground water is just so warm at this time of year, it's kind of almost a waste of time. I've got it down to 89 Fahrenheit, useless. Uh, so I'm gonna put the wort in the uh, fermentation chamber, my chest freezer, leave it there to cool off uh, to around sort of 55, which is when I will add the yeast. Now this yeast is WLP 830, that's German lager yeast. And um, yeah, that's what we're gonna use for fermentation. 
Anyway, that concludes my first ever 100% distilled water beer. So here's the amber lager, the Czech amber lager. It came out at 4.2%. Okay. So what do you think about, first of all, the color? Is it amber? Um, yeah. Yes. It actually really is a very nice amber color. It's a beautiful color. I'm really pleased with the color. Okay, so how about the aroma? A little malty. I'm not getting anything of the hops. No, I, I smell zero hops. I yeah. smell, like like I said, the little bit of malt, but... Can we try it? Let's try okay. it. <laughs> well, I don't really know your buzzwords. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Any descriptor is good. Like, what does it taste like? Uh, it is a smooth... <laughs> Sorry. Smooth tasting beer, but I do taste like the malt, like we were just talking about smelling it, but ho zero hops at all. Yeah, definitely that. So I used Marathata because I wanted that sort of bready malty taste, and I think that's that's definitely in the beer. It definitely lingers a little bit on your tongue. Like yep. I can I can have an aftertaste of it, but it's not too overpowering. Yeah. So. But unlike the other Czech beers, which had um, some sort of hop character, I'm just getting malt. Of this one. Yeah, it's all it's all malty yep. to me. Um, so the other thing that you don't know about this beer mm -hmm. is that normally I brew the beer just using tap water that's filtered. Uh, this time I bought distilled water and built the water from that. So I bought eight jugs of distilled water okay. and, and did that from the grocery store. Um, can you sort of taste any characteristic differences from this from the other beers that I've brewed? Honestly, I'm going to say no. Because maybe if you had done one with regular distilled water and then the water you usually do, right? That would we would have had something to like taste the difference of. No, I agree with you though that even though um, this was made with distilled water, the end product to me doesn't taste any different. It still yeah. has the same sort of house characteristic that I think right. uh, all, all these beers have. Yeah. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. I did. I Cheers. It. Cheers. Personally, I think the the jugs and the bottles you get at the grocery store is just tap water. So. Well, I measured it with a total dissolved solids meter, and in fact, okay. there was a difference. Like a little strip thing, yes. like alkaline strip. Yeah. Okay. Well, it wasn't a strip; it's actually a little gadget. But, that's, but I agree. That's with... probably made up too.